If you want to get mechanical, but you could only learn one thing, my number one tip would be to master directional air roll. Yet of all the things I've trained in my now almost 4,000 hours in Rocket League, air roll was the one where I made the most mistakes. So to save you the hundreds of hours I've wasted, I went live for over an hour to answer all your air roll questions in one stream. So whether you're advanced or just starting out with air roll, even if you minimize this tab and just listen in while you train, I guarantee you're going to learn this mechanic two times or three times as fast as I ever could. If you're new here, what's up? My name's Luke. I'm a top 0.1% rated coach, but I'm mainly known for running Rocket League's number one live coaching program with now over 2,000 players called the Grand Champ Roadmap. Inside the program, we take gold through champs like you watching up to GC in just six weeks or less. And as of this morning, we've got less than five of our 100 seats left for this upcoming March launch. So if you're on the grind for GC watching right now and you want one of those last five spots before we sell out and shut down until May, DM me with the keyword five and we can talk details about how to get you in. My discord will be first linked down below and let's go over everything you need to learn air roll. Welcome everybody who's tuning in, those on YouTube, those on Twitch, appreciate you guys. The goal of today is I know you guys have a lot of questions about air roll. I, you know, I've made different air roll tutorials but I want to know, what are your guys' biggest air roll questions? We'll just answer them. Whatever questions you got for air roll, we'll be answering them. And hopefully this is uh, hopefully this is helpful for you all. Luke, what rank is it best to start focus on training air roll? This is a great question. So in my opinion, air roll is probably the most important mechanic to learn. In, I would say it's the most difficult mechanic to learn in Rocket League. But it's also like if I had to just pick one mechanic to train that would give me the most improvement on all other aspects of my gameplay, it would be air roll. That being said, to reach grand champ in Rocket League, you don't need to be good in the air. You you just don't. Like you can you can get grand champ in Rocket League just making single touch aerial plays and staying grounded and rotating properly. So my answer to you is like, if your goal is to just get Grand Champ, you don't need air roll. But if you want to become as mechanical as you can be, and you eventually want to reach air like SSL, then in that case, you want to learn air roll as soon as possible. Like after you learn all the all the base level mechanics, I would I would start training directional air roll in probably Diamond probably diamond learn all the base mechanics to get out of plat start training in diamond i mean that of course everybody will vary but like when i trained air roll i mean i i was already gc before i learned directional air roll like you don't need it to get gc and there are people who can even get ssl i who have gotten ssl i don't know if people are still doing it to this day without without learn, knowing directional air roll but roughly i would say Learn all the basics, get through plat, start training air roll and diamond. If you want to get as mechanical as possible. Is it okay to have power slide binded to the same button as directional air roll? Oh, this is a good question. If you put power slide and directional air roll on the same button, it will make your wave dashing really hard. I've had players in my coaching program have to change their controls because of this. Do not put air roll left or air roll right on the same button as your power slide. What is a good aerial sensitivity for learning directional aerial? Oh, this is a great question. I have the same advice for sensitivity on the ground that I do in the air. So you'll notice I have my sensitivity very high. It's at 2.1. Most pros play anywhere between 1.4 and 1.8. Mine is very high. When people are asking me what ground sensitivity should they start out with, I recommend anywhere between 1.2 and 1.4. This will make it so that your inputs are less sensitive and you're not like constantly jumping back and forth between the ball, which is a problem that a lot of new players have. So in the same way, when you're learning air roll, I recommend that you start out with a low aerial sensitivity. And as you get better and better, you dial it up and up and up. So it, there's no like hard and fast rule of like when you can do this, increase at this but if you're having trouble learning directional air roll you can start by turning it down and that will make it so that way your your actual joystick inputs don't change the direction your car is moving as much 
and it'll it'll spin your car effectively slower. Sort of like having training wheels on your air roll, if you will. So good question. Do you need to learn one air roll bind at a time? So this is a great question. Let's let's take it from the top. What should you actually bind for your air rolls? A lot of people ask, do you need both directional air rolls? Do you need joystick air roll? Let's let's explain because this is actually like one of the most commonly misunderstood things um, about about air roll, especially for people starting out. And this can cost you. So you should you should understand this before anything else. First, what is the difference between jo I'm going to call them joystick air roll versus directional air roll? Joystick air roll is the air roll where you have to hold down your joystick and tell it which direction to turn. So for me, I have joystick air roll, which is just like free air roll on R one on R1, which is the same as RB. And this air roll forces you to move your joystick to tell it which way to go. Now, that's the one type of air roll. The other type of air roll is directional air roll. That is what you'll see binded in your settings as air roll left versus air roll right. So when people say ARL or ARR, this is what they're referring to. Air roll left and air roll right here. You'll notice I have both air rolls bounded here, both air roll left, air roll right, and my joystick air roll. But in terms of what should you learn, I recommend you only pick one directional air roll. And here's why. Directional air roll, it, the, the reason it's good is it allows you to move your joystick and pitch your car while you spin it. Whereas free air roll or joystick air roll, you can't pivot your car and pitch it while you spin. So having that directional air roll allows you to move your joystick while spinning. The only problem is when you have both air roll left and air roll right bound and you're pitching your joystick, the controls are inverted. So if you hold air roll right and you push up, it'll, it'll send you the same direction as if you hold air roll left and push up. But if you hold air roll right and push to the right, It'll send you the opposite direction as if you hold arrow left and push to the right. So it's basically, long story short, it will take you twice as long or roughly you'll have to re like any, any car control you learn with arrow left is not going to translate over to the car control you'll learn doing arrow right. So like in a perfect world you'll know that you'll you might notice that some of the pros you know they're they're picking up both they have both directional air roll left and directional air roll right bound but you can turn your car in any direction and pivot it pivot in any direction just using one directional air roll so for 99 percent of players you want to just learn one directional air roll and use joystick air roll for everything else on the ground like your ground recoveries your wave dashes, your half flips, things like that. It's faster to learn just one directional air roll. And you'll, I mean, you'll unlock more car control by learning both, but there's just like a very, very slight advantage. You're, you're, you're going from like 98% car control to like 99 by having both directional air rolls bound. You don't need them both bound. Hopefully that answers your question. I use air roll left on square. And I have joystick air roll bound on my R1 to the same button as my power side. So make sure, make sure you do, I, I would recommend you do something similar. Pick one directional air roll, put it on the, the main part of your controller here. I forget what it's called. It's different on Xbox and PS4, just cause that's, that's pretty, that's usually the easiest way. And then you put your joystick air roll and power side on the same bind. Do you use directional air roll for half flips? Uh, Yes, I recommend you do use directional air roll for half flips. And the reason is because, well, there are two ways to half flip. You can half flip using this sort of quarter flip technique by just doing a backwards diagonal flip cancel, going down into the left and then up into the left. And this requires no air roll at all. Down into the right, up into the right. Just like with a speed flip, this requires no air roll at all. If you do it this way. But this will put you slightly off center. As you can see, when I do this, I move a little bit to the left. And when I half flip this way, I move a little bit to the right. So if you want just a perfectly straight half flip, you need to use directional air roll. 
otherwise when you cancel like this and you try to turn over it'll it'll put you sideways because you you have to hold down the cancel and if you are holding down your half flip cancel you can't press joystick you can't move your joystick to do the joystick arrow at the same time so i think it's easiest to just learn the half flip with directional arrow down up directional arrow doesn't matter which way you do it you can arrow left arrow right whichever that's the easiest way but most times in game i use uh i use the flip cancel method good question what should you learn after learning how to turn left and right with air roll that's a good question okay so this 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 is a really good question people ask when you're learning directional air roll where do you start where do, where where do you even start how do you learn the the different like the different inputs first things first you have to understand that directional air roll isn't one mechanic directional air roll is the combination of flying forward flying sideways to the right flying backwards and flying with your car facing to the left when you're air rolling up isn't just up up is whatever direction your car is actually facing so before you learn air roll the best thing you can do is learn how to just fly forwards like this from goal to goal while staying up backwards from goal to goal just while staying up and then sideways from goal to goal just while staying up like this this is where you start this will be challenging enough for you before you learn everything else then once you can fly and control your speed and stay in the air like this that's when you can actually start learning how to spin that's that's how you that that's when you can start learning like the actual tornado spin adjustments and things like that so that's step one then step two is move on to the actual like spinning okay one of the best tips i can give you when you're starting out and learning how to learning how to control your car using directional air roll is don't actually use your entire joystick don't like if you want to learn how to directional air roll don't try to push your joystick in every single direction it'll be too overwhelming instead just start and I, I recommend starting with just learning the tornado spin so for those of you who don't know what the tornado spin is tornado spin is when you hold directional air roll like an arrow left or arrow right and push opposite your directional air roll so if i'm using arrow left or tornado spin is pushing to the right and holding arrow right arrow left uh and if you want to flip it if you're using arrow right a tornado spin is holding arrow right and pushing to the left on your joystick just like this and the reason the tornado spin is the first thing you should learn once you learn the once you learn how to fly sideways and backwards is because the tornado spin is the most common spin you'll use the reason is because it lifts your hood from this starting position up vertical so if i tornado spin halfway and then let go of my air roll i'll go from facing down here to up and this is one of the most common adjustments you'll use you'll see it used in a breezy flick you'll see it used off the backboard to clear the ball away and you'll use this adjustment when you're doing say a ground air dribble and so it's the most common one you'll use in game that's why i recommend you start with it so before you even like start spinning and midair and learning all that stuff just learn how to tornado spin and understand how it lifts your wheels up into the air because this will give you like this this will this will give your brain something to return to you'll know hey if i tornado spin halfway and then let go of my air roll halfway through or let go of my joystick halfway through that spin i can go from facing down to facing up and now you have one piece of the puzzle that you can use to move your car from a common position midair to this position two common positions that you'll be in so once you know that like once you can do that off the ground you can then start practice flying in the air in free play and use that adjustment to control your speed so let's say you're flying too fast forward 
you can half tornado spin to start flying the other way. Then once you finally understand how to control your speed using the tornado spin, you can start learning how to turn left and right. And this is where I can kind of just give you the shortcut. Um, and if you're, if you use arrow left, it'll be exactly the same as I describe it here. And if you use arrow right, it'll be flipped. So instead of when I say up and to the right, that's up and to the left for you. If you use arrow right, but when I'm flying, if I want to turn right, I simply hold arrow left, starting from this neutral position and push up and to the right on my joystick, up and to the right on my joystick. Notice how that turns me to the right up and to the right, up and to the right. And notice how I, I, I'm not holding it down for the entire spin. If I hold it down for the entire spin, I do a 360 and I start spinning back in the direction I came and I just fly forward. But if I do that half tornado spin adjustment that I talked about earlier, where I let go my joystick after half of the spin is done, it'll change the direction my nose is facing. And that's how we turn to the right. So you start here, up and to the right for just half the spin. Up and to the right for just half the spin. If I want to turn left, it's the same thing. Up and to the left, or I mean down and to the right, excuse me. We're only using tornado spins. Down and to the right for half a spin. Down and to the right for half a spin. And from there, we're going to want to, we're going to want to start just getting reps in to practice that. So that's what I recommend. And I'll show you guys here if you go into the path and you go back here. To the ring section you can then jump into a ring section like this and you just practice doing those single adjustments so i'm flying too far to the right down into the right turn me left up into the right to turn me right down into the right to turn me left up into the right to turn me right down to the left to turn me left and that is how you do it and the rings maps will just force you to move through force you to move through a through a specific line that makes you makes you get that turned down right and will tell you if you got it wrong and now you'll notice that when I arrow like sometimes I'll flick my joystick over to the left just because I have that control down but most of my arrow flying is just pushing my joystick to the right and you can reach like 95% aerial control with arrow only needing to push your joystick in that one direction so I hope that helps. How do you transition from knowing how to air roll in a rings map to knowing how to air roll in free play and in game? This is a great question. Okay. So the problem with rings maps, rings, and I, and I, th this is something that I actually dealt with that slowed down how, how well I air rolled in game for months. Like it, it, it made me worse for months until I realized it. The problem with air rolling in rings maps is every adjustment starts from this look like if you follow my method you'll learn air roll really fast but every adjustment will start with your hood up which means when you get in game if you ever try to use air roll on a surface that is not perfectly starting with your hood up you'll get confused so like for example if you want to use air roll off of your backboard now my car's backwards right so the same adjustment that would normally pull my hood up if I'm backwards it's now going to pull my hood down we see this so I would practice using your directional air roll off of the right wall for a setup off the left wall for a setup and off the backboard for the exact same for the exact same thing off the backboard for a setup because if you if you don't you're going to be really good at like any aerial where you can have a lot of time to adjust but you're not going to be good at using air roll off the walls and things like that the main thing that you have to practice is you just have to practice using that directional off each surface how should i air roll while air dribbling as in should i just cook sear roll forward default tornado roll or something else so yeah this is a good question um, for those of you who don't know, a cook to your twist is the opposite of a tornado spin. So tornado spin is you push opposite air roll. Like if I'm air roll lefting, I push my joystick to the right. A cook to your twist pulls my wheels down and it's holding air roll left and pushing my joystick to the left. When I'm in game, 
I use tornado spins on my takeoffs when I want to rise in the air. And I use Cuxier twists. The only real common way I use them is on like flip resets. So sometimes I'll be going for a flip reset and you'll see me pull the other way on my joystick. And that's because, like we said, a Cuxier twist will pull your, pull your nose down and you can kind of use it to get this flip reset, right? It takes my car from flying like this to having my nose pointed down in the flip reset position. That being said, you really don't need to know both. Like you can just have your car, like when your car is upside down, now a tornado spin pulls me down more. If I show you this, if my car is facing down or tornado spin will pull me down and a cook's ear twist will pull me up. So it just depends on which way your hood's facing. Is there a specific time when you should or shouldn't use air roll in game? So yeah, there. This is this is uh this is actually kind of funny. I was talking with uh, apparently Jack about this, and he was saying, in a perfect world, pros would air roll a lot less than they do now. Like a perfect player would barely need to air roll at all in game. Uh, they just air roll to make the the exact adjustment they need with their car and then get the touch they want most people continuously air roll because they have better control while constantly spinning than they do just spinning once and continuing to fly in that direction to answer your question how much should you air roll you should only air roll as much as you need to to get to get the perfect touch to get the touch that you want but in practice, most people will be constantly air rolling because it gives them better control. Kitten says, why does Jack say at the most peak potential of Rocket League, there'd be less air roll? Uh, doesn't air roll speed up your car's acceleration and speed? So why would it be used less? No, air roll does not. That's a, that's a, that's a great question. Air roll does not make your car any, any faster. And some people say like air roll reduces knockback as well. Somebody can fact check me on this in the comments, but I'm nearly certain air roll isn't what reduces your knockback in the air. If you ever get knockback from a setup, like when you're aerialing into a ball, it's because you're not pushing your joystick in the direction that you're hitting the ball. So that way your car's pivoting and counteracting it. And it's sort of a it's sort of an incidental effect where when you air roll and you're holding directional air roll, you're also pushing your joystick around. And that pushing of the joystick is what counteracts the recoil from the ball, not the fact that you're spinning. What are the worst bad habits involving air roll? There are two really bad habits you can get into with air roll. The first bad habit you can get into, always doing the same adjustments. Like if you already have good aerial car control, you want to jump into rings maps and purposely put your car in positions that you don't understand how to recover from. So if you don't know how to understand how to recover when your car's like this, you got to learn how to. Like don't don't just always fly like this if you already understand how to control your car that way. Once you once you get it down, you want to intentionally put your car in weird positions that you don't quite know how to control and try to adjust out of them in ways that you couldn't before. So that's that's like error number 1. That's like the training side and then in game is over air rolling. So when you're already lined up for the ball, a lot of people will hit it and then just continue spinning until they push their car out of line with the ball. Like here, taking the ball off the wall for a double tap. I have a good line with the ball. Now I'm going to air roll and mess myself up. You don't need to air roll if, you, if, if you're already in line with it. And this is like super true on double taps. Like I'm already in line with the ball. Don't, don't, don't. I don't need to keep tornado spinning, right? So that's, that's the biggest thing. Luke, when you do a speed flip, how do you do the air roll corrections? Okay, yeah, this is this is a little bit of a set. This is kind of a little bit of a bonus uh, bonus question. But when you're speed flipping, some people say you need to air roll left or air roll right. You actually don't. It, it, it doesn't matter. You can use air roll left, air roll right, joystick air roll, neutral. You know, it doesn't matter. The only thing, the, the thing about the speed flip is that if you do it without air rolling, your car will land slightly off. It, it will land slightly sideways opposite the direction you speed flip. So if you speed flip left and you don't air roll left at the end, you'll land slightly sideways as you can see here in this sort of position. And if you speed flip right without air rolling right, 
you'll land slightly right in this position, as you can see there. So you can either use joystick air roll or directional air roll to just finish off that speed flip. So if you're speed flipping left, you need to tap air roll left at the end. If you're speed flipping right, you need to air roll to the right at the end. I just use my joystick air roll and that's how I, uh, that's how I finish my speed flips. So you'll notice I start my speed flip up and to the left, cancel down and to the left, and then I just hold RB at the end, and that's what continues to air roll my car. If I didn't hold RB, this is what it looks like. I land kind of sideways. See that? And when I press RB at the end, that finishes and air rolls me to the left. So you can use either. Hope that helps. Beyond that, I would say get your reps in. If you have any more questions, definitely check out my other air roll guides. But to everybody who asked questions in chat, appreciate you. I hope that was helpful. If you do have more questions, feel free to ask away in my Discord server. We're actually the largest improvement Discord. Plus, it's completely free to join and you can always leave whenever you want. We've got like 40k people in there. So if you want answers from not just me, but people, other players who are higher ranked and honestly better than me, uh, join that. <laughs> Definitely join that. I'll have it first linked down below. Otherwise, thank you guys so much for watching and I'll catch you all in the next one. Peace, peace.